the S. Corner Clinic and the Community Development Organization started operations in 1990 with a disaster mitigation program in the aftermath of Hurricane Gilbert, which struck Jamaica on September 12, 1988. Sixteen years later, in September 2004, Hurricane Ivan devastated Jamaica, disrupting everyday life for some time. Sixty percent of the approximately 3,000 householders in Bennettland lost their roofs, and all of them lost their fencing. This meant double exposure from the elements and the prying eyes. Debris from household and environmental waste was piled high on the streets for weeks, and the responsible government services were overwhelmed in the aftermath. The S. Corner Clinic and Community Development Organization managed to restore a sense of normalcy by mobilizing to remove trees from roofs and yards, clean gutters, and clear dead animals from the streets. S. Corner also organized residents, especially women, into teams to address the more detailed sanitation tasks like sweeping streets and packaging rubbish. The collective activity strengthened residents to collaborate on other initiatives. The organization is considered to be a multifaceted organization, which includes a health center. We started out as a basic health center and we have evolved into this wonderful community development organization. And then, because the houses that, we, that are inside of the community are very I don't want vulnerable um, people's lifestyle. We have a disaster mitigation program in which we help persons to rehabilitate and prepare themselves for a hurricane. Okay. This project was part of S. Corner's ongoing efforts to reduce poverty and improve the quality of life for residents in the Bennettland community. Poverty is, is, is self perpetuating in Jamaica. Unfortunately, because that never used to be the case, it used to be that post-slavery, one generation was able to see the next generation move to another level. Might not have been terribly far, but you still move. The S Corner staff includes a doctor, nurse, and community health workers. These experts have provided extensive primary health care to various interest groups in the Bennettland community. S. Corner's initial concern when it started out in 1990 was to reduce the health risks faced by citizens living in squalor in Bennettland. The absence of health care and sanitation services in the area at the time meant that residents deposited their human waste in plastic bags, which they then dumped in gullies and open lots. S. Corner's health workers have seen their efforts bring good results as there have been significant improvements in the social health of its host community. A family clinic, like over the years, you see, like so the elderly, their children will come and children, children, so it's like family tradition. Morning, morning, morning. Oh, Marcia, yeah, we'll care them then. This one. We have to go in the community, that's the major part of the work. Go in the community, check for like the, the babies that are under immunized. That are not, I mean, um, that means that they're not up to date with the immunization to, to correspond with the age. And like the pregnant mothers, also sanitation in the homes, we have to check for that. And like the shuttings that the elder Latin had come to the clinic, we have to go to them, like to do their pressure, their sugar, and stuff like that. This can now in the clinic work now, we assist the nurse. So like we do the registration and do the checks for the patient before they go into the doctor. Workshops are held to encourage residents to take responsibility for their personal development and the social security of their dependents. 
Complying with this requirement empowers the residents of Bennett Land to improve the quality of their health. In response to the overwhelming need, Escorna introduced a latrine project which aimed to improve the sanitation and environmental conditions and help residents live with more dignity. During the implementation of the Latrin project, 24 women were trained by the Women's Construction Collective in basic masonry techniques. This enabled them to work alongside experienced male construction workers from the community to build over 100 pit latrines. This project not only averted the impending health crisis, but also strengthened the capacity of community residents to work together to solve their problems. The community health workers went on a survey, and during that survey, our first outside of the community started, we noticed that there wasn't any toilets, flush toilets. And we, we were embarked on a program in sending out proposal, and we were very successful. We did over a hundred pit latching within the community. S Corner also pioneered a water supply project to provide the Bennett Land community with legitimate access to clean water and to improve sanitation. Groups of households sharing a yard were formed into cooperatives to pay fixed bills. Each household was responsible for ensuring that others complied with this arrangement. Yeah, we have to take both kids from our and come around and other people yard come catch water on a crescent road in the big yard over here. So, and it's hard, so glad so we get the water for no, you don't know. Yeah, want the water, big up Escan, because you don't know them go water. Yeah. And the toilet, no people never have the toilet and them go with the toilet though. Yeah, glad for all of that. Beyond its social development activities, S Corner is deeply involved in tackling the entrenched violence which is typical of garrison communities and which poses the biggest threat to its work. Garrison's challenge. <laughs> Garrison is a mixture of politics and all the things that challenge development. It's going to operate in a garrison community, and which is very different from a poor community because it's not just the characteristics of poverty, but it is the access to guns. It is the access of guns in the hands of illiterate youths that we're trying to eliminate, that keep garrison community in this cycle of poverty and unemployment because it really disrupts everything. A practice of politics in Jamaica in which communities are disconnected one from the other, streets are disconnected one from the other. Um, people who I grew up with and went to school with are disconnected from me because they may have a different political outlook. They live on the, a street that has a pol different political outlook. That corralling that homogenization of thought and action has meant that people have been very confined, a profound confinement, a profound confinement of options, mobility, um, choice, um, and that confinement of choice and mobility and options. When, when I believe that when people are subjected to such a small corner for a long time, the mongoose nature emerges. If you ever trap a mongoose, it becomes very vicious. Similarly, human beings, if we, if we trap human beings into small spaces, and I don't only mean physically small, I mean psychically small spaces where their sense of who they are, 
what is possible for them, the notion that you actually have choice and can exercise it, free will, um, the, the, the understanding that the Constitution applies to you and any privilege and right that is accorded under the Constitution is yours. Where that, where that is missing for not just one generation, but multiple generations, then you get a, a powerful self replicating and perpetuating psychosis. In Jamaica, garrison politics involves young men fighting against each other to secure a turf. This practice was introduced in the early 1970s by the two main political parties, the People's National Party and the Jamaica Labour Party. This tactic has been used over the years as a partisan power mechanism at the grassroots level. The particular challenge they faced um, from early was the one of violence, because when a wave of violence took over, people couldn't come to the clinic, um, youth couldn't come to education, everything went to a standstill, and eventually their own lives were threatened. Um, the, the, the chairperson of their association was raped one time, and um, shots were flying up and down the street, and the staff was clearly intimidated. We had to, in fact, at one stage get counseling for them. But that was the major challenge, how to build a community in the face of this violence. Escorna collaborated with reggae artists, including Tony Rebel, Queen Africa, and Luciano, to spearhead a conciliatory meeting among gang members as part of the peace building program. Pastor Carlton Dennis and Pastor Derek Kitson, who both minister in the Escorna district, also supported the peacekeeping effort. Um, the peace management initiative was very successful, mainly because we had persons who were committed to the process, who didn't just walk talk the talk, but they also walk the walk. We had musicians that were committed, Rastafarians, Tony Rebel, Sajoya Alcott, who serves as a lawyer um, for the organization, as well as a community advocate and for peace. We had a Queen Africa, Luciana, um, our board members, persons from the community as well, who formed a part of that community, for the committee for the community, who was willing to mediate who knew that it took hours of their time investing in these youths to change and transform how they think, how they wanted to continue working and building a relationship with each other. So it was a very long process. It didn't happen overnight. And it came with all. It was only successful because Escona had already built trust within the community and with the youths, and they were able to trust us. Well, my involvement with Escona was about bringing some change down in the Kingston 13 region where for years you have different factions of, of, of the community fighting each other and killing each other. What we did was actually invite all of the head people, all the people who were controlling each area to come to a, a meeting with us at, at two different locations. We had two meetings at two different hotels. And Lots of tension um, when it was supposed to happen, but anyway, we make sure that we search everybody. Nobody could bring any guns, so it was kind of safe. We talked to the police that that was going to happen because we, we, we wanted the police to just give us a chance to see if we could use our method to see if we could find some solutions in, 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 in the place because they obviously couldn't. Went to the place and it was like, biting a brick to get these people to even eat together. But after a while, we, we actually got them to eat together and started to talk and everybody started to express themselves. So the more they express themselves, is the more even themselves realize that, look, we're really killing off each other for nothing. And so the consensus was, was made at the time that um, we're going to have a ceasefire. Ceasefire. 
When a high-flying kite strayed from one side of the Bennett Land community into enemy territory on the other side, and an oppositional combatant crossed the borderline to return it, S. Corner read this as a sign that peace building was possible. S. Corner therefore hosted a kite festival which harnessed the Jamaican Easter time tradition as a symbol of freedom. The festival provided a rare space for gunmen to socialize. One of the indicators that showed us that the youth were ready to work with each other was just that. They came up with a plan of action that they would build a fence, they would have a fundraising event, and the proceeds of that event would go towards the different gangs, the different sections of the community to start income generation activities. In order to reduce unemployment and crime, S. Corner provided the resources for groups of young men to establish income generating enterprises. These projects included chicken rearing, block making and bag juice production. Outputs from these efforts are marketed both inside and outside of the community. I give thanks to Escana Clinic. They helped me a whole lot by taking me out of gang violence and some other local unnecessary thing where we sit down on the corner and have none for the daytime. You know, Escana helped me to be a better man by starting this bag juice project and I can employ a couple of youth who used to do the same thing like me and send my local sisters and local brother to school so they, they can be a better lady and man in life. I just want to say give thanks to Escana Clinic and Wallach. S. Corner's education program demonstrates further the organization's commitment to changing the conditions that create and maintain poverty. Main beneficiaries are school leavers who need supplemental instruction. I went to Escana's grassroots program way back when I went I went um, to Kingsgate Skills Training through 